Hello everyone, I'm Harvey Silverman, back by popular demand for the second session of Golf Business Live Tech Talks. Uh, our first session's ratings beat Live Golf, so they invited me to come back for a second, and we hope to keep this going from here on. Uh, my guest today, this is going to be a really interesting conversation with a gentleman named Joseph Saracino. He's president and CEO of Sino Security Solutions, which is a full-service cybersecurity advisory firm. Joe is also a Navy vet, and he's here to talk to us today about the cyber battlefield. Joe, thanks for coming. Well, thank you, Harvey. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Got a lot to talk about, so um, you'll, you'll get my passion in a minute, but uh, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll take it to where we need to. Very good. Um, I found Joe because of an article he wrote a couple of years ago that was published in uh, Club and Resort Business. And um, it fascinated me because uh, where I live out in Silicon Valley, we're getting stories all the time about uh, breaches and cybersecurity issues. And, and there's you know companies up and down the valley here trying to solve these problems as well as other parts of the world. And uh, to me, it always seems like the, the cyber criminals are or maintain uh, one step ahead of everybody trying to solve these problems. So Joe's here to talk a little bit about more specifically um, what golf course owners uh, can and should be doing and um, giving us a little bit of a lesson on uh, where things might be going. So Joe, I, I think the first question I want to ask, and this is rather broad, um, but how prepared do you think most golf course owners and operators are for a cyber attack? That's a good question, Harvey. I mean, there's a lot of different levels here. So the big key is that um, uh, we've seen uh, many different uh, uh, golf courses, golf clubs, we're in that space. Uh, and uh, there's a variety of different, um, uh, you know, levels that, that uh, the owners really uh, have, but n not a lot. I mean, back in the day, when you're taking a look at five, six years ago, uh, you know, people didn't even know what ransomware was, and and it was it's tough. So it's tough to be prepared when you really don't know what all the elements are. So our, you know, our our motto is to educate, protect, and defend. We want to get people educated. There's a lot more education that needs to to uh, be done. And the owners really need to start to take this in uh, to part of their DNA, because what happens is that, you know, the big guys have always it's always been publicized, whether it's a Target or Home Depot. Those are the folks that were getting hit. And it gave a, almost a false sense of security to the smaller businesses, the SMBs. Uh, and they said, well, gee, you know, who's going to come after my my club, who's going to come after my facility, but that's further from the truth. The the hackers, the uh, the uh, the bad actors know that, so that is gives us a huge huge target when we when we're looking at that. So they they need, and obviously we've got a little bells in the background, but um, but they they need to really take that and and kind of get that out of their mind. They need to know that they're their uh their data is valuable because all data is saleable uh, you know any any way you can take uh they can get data from you they're going to take it they're going to sell it on the on the market and everything is saleable so uh so that's the big thing so we're golf course operations around the country are in the midst of a transformation from uh older client server type uh, point of sale system, uh, ma golf management systems to cloud systems. Mm -hmm. And I've been curious about this. And it's one of the reasons I contacted you to talk about this. Um, with all these courses going to the cloud, what are there additional exposures that they have um, going to a cloud system? Well, a, a, a couple of things. That, and it's great to go to a cloud system. Obviously, it gives a ease of use. Uh, you can have many different types of devices that are going to be able to access across many different arenas. Um, but uh, again, it's um, you, you have to look at 
how that is all set up. You know, um, I think one of the biggest areas is the misconfiguration uh, of the of the cloud uh, with those devices. Those misconfigurations are a, uh, actual pathways uh, for hackers to get into. Uh, it's good to be in the cloud. Uh, it gives us that ease of use. Uh, you can't let your guard down, though. That's the big key. Don't let you let your guard down. Look, you don't have lack of. Yeah, well, you have lack of visibility to. Let's say if you had a AWS, uh, which is uh, the uh, an, an Amazon server, but you don't have uh, visibility into into their um, platform. So you know those are the types of things that. We need to look at the you. There are a tendency to have a little weaker password uh, process as well. So again, knowing what the uh, what the, what the cloud-based services uh, have and how they perform that service uh, will give you at least the ability to prepare to to be a little bit more cyber secure with that. But the misconfiguration is a big, big key. In fact. There was a report that just came out earlier today that talked about how the uh, hackers are uh, trying to uh, really reconfigure what they're what they're uh, what they're doing to uh, get into uh, a, a cloud-based system. So they're utilizing different programming. In fact, they're using something called Rust programming language to develop ways and versions to get into a cloud-based system because it's it's about the misconfigurations. So that's a big, big key. So is it imperative upon golf course operators when they're uh, either looking at changing to a cloud system or have already changed to a cloud system to be asking these questions about their Absolutely. security uh, capabilities and you know whether that's firewalls or, or, or whatever, I guess I'd want to know specifically, what are you doing to protect my data? Well, here's the thing. Um, so for the MSP, so we're not an MSP. We are a cybersecurity firm. We overlook that. We, we do the quality control. We do the testing, the penetration testing. We, add, we act like the bad actor, but we're the white hats. So we're coming in and kind of pushing on those controls. And, uh, and then reporting on them. And then basically what happens is that we'll hand that over to the MSP or the internal IT folks to, um, to mitigate. So uh, the big key is that those questions need to be asked, but we, we check those. So we're checking your cloud systems, your configurations, your policies. Uh, so this way you have a really good handle on where you stand. And we prioritize that as well. If there's vulnerabilities there, we're going to prioritize it so we can get those uh, vulnerabilities taken care of. So we, we ask the questions, but as far as um, all, all of the uh, all owners out there, they should be asking those questions as well, at least to their MSPs. You mentioned the story to me uh, in one of our earlier conversations uh, about you, you were going through the testing at, a, at an operation, don't know if it was a golf course or some other business, uh, and you found the vulner vulnerability to be in a old network printer sitting down in the basement. Right. Um, yeah. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, that's pretty interesting because, um, you know, hey, look, if, if a piece of equipment works, uh, you don't want to. You don't want to uh, uh, get rid of it. You want to keep it as long as it can. Uh, it can uh, perform its uh, functional operation. What uh, we found is that there was a vulnerability in a printer that was. Uh, I think it was uh, on level the basement level. This is old printer down a legacy printer uh, that just wasn't updated. And uh, and those are the things that we find uh, to make sure that those holes get plugged. Because even though it's an old system, some security measures, uh, some updates are not necessarily performed and, and you need to really be cognizant of that. And you need to have a, a really good mapping of your internal structure, which we do. We take a look at that. We, when we go in and we analyze the internal network, we want to look at where everything is and we, then we test it. So we found vulnerabilities there, and uh, and that was uh, 
and they didn't even know it was plugged in. I mean, they hardly used it, and uh, but it was just sitting there as a vulnerable piece. And those are the things that need to be addressed. So, um, do you see any? So, is understanding is a, a, a owner and operator understanding their configurations? Is that the biggest challenge they have in respect to cybersecurity and protecting themselves? Well, I, I think the biggest challenge is, um, let's face it, when you look at cybersecurity, right, Harvey, the, you don't see it. I mean, cybersecurity is basically cyber, which is a computer, security of that computer. The computer really is a data processor. So it's holding data or transacting data. The security on top of that is what we're layering, right? So everybody has to be concerned about protecting their data because they're the fiduciary of that data. So whether you're part of a club or a, 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 an association, uh, a golf course, you're collecting data. Once you take that data in, you hold the responsibility of securing that data. Uh, so your system does that. When we look at it, we need to have that data secure. So cybersecurity is that. It's taking that, um, taking that mindset and making sure that you're doing all of the best practices. Um, an owner really needs to take that and have that become part of their DNA. I think, and, and you have to get the buy-in from, from everyone. And it's not just one person or the CTO or the IT person or the MSP. It's, it, it, it works from the board of directors all the way to someone who is actually collecting something at, uh, at, the, at the bar, let's just say. Um, so those best practices uh, need to be uh, taken into consideration. And what I was alluding to before is that the raging battle, and we call it a cyber battlefield, right? Uh, and that's exactly what it is. That is going on behind the walls. You don't see that. So you're not reactive to it. Uh, it's one thing about somebody coming at you. Uh, if you're driving or if you're walking, you're going to kind of avoid that. Uh, behind the wall, you really, it's out of sight, out of mind. So you don't address it as, as, uh, as you should. Uh, you don't consider the threat. And we always like to have that be the priority in education. But that's a challenge because out of sight, out of mind. And I, and I can tell you a story, too, is that I'm out at a presentation and I present across the country. Um, you know, you get people hopped up and maybe even your folks that are listening today, they're all, you know, saying, OK, I need to do that. Uh, I need to get this done. Um, but once it, the presentation goes away again, you're left with the same, you know, uh, atmosphere as, as you did. And unless you do something and have it become part of your DNA then you don't act accordingly. So what's been happening over time, though, uh, is the compliance piece has been pushing that envelope, which is a good thing, which I'll talk about a little bit more. But again, there are all these little factors that are starting to push people a little forward on it. And that's where, that's where we really need to, um, I guess, concentrate on. So that's the challenge is really keeping that heightened awareness, that passion. Uh, I look, I've got a passion for cybersecurity because I'm in it, right? So it's easy for me. But when somebody's doing their day-to-day -day operations, their day-to-day -day job, they've got their backs against one wall and then another, uh, you know, all of a sudden they've got to look at it and say, I, wait a minute, I've got, a, I've got cybersecurity that I have to address. But it, 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 in order to, and you don't want them to be passionate on cybersecurity because they feel the pain of a breach. That's what we're trying to avoid. But the key here is that it takes a while, and that's the challenge. That I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges. You can get the threats. You can do it all. There's a big threat out there. But it's really kind of getting it into you set yourself and your organization and really spread it. It has to become a culture within the organization. So uh, what are the first steps that a uh, golf course owner uh, or operator should, should, should be taken to um, establish a sound cybersecurity program? Mm -hmm. So um, first of all, you should really have a good cybersecurity firm like us to kind of walk you through it. And many, many, many people need handholding and we, we get it. 
So um, at one point, we were very technical when we came out with the presentation. Uh, then we realized that that only lasted about 30 seconds in a presentation and it went uh, somewhere else. Um, but we wanted to get down into the heart of the matter. This is about a business solution. Um, you know, folks wouldn't start out a company without workers' compensation, liability, things like that. You, there are things that you need to do. Um, so you first need to get with a very reputable uh, uh, and qualified cybersecurity firm um, like us, uh, but uh, a firm that's going to be able to be a trusted advisor and walk you through it. Um, you really need to have a, a vulnerability assessment. That's going to be a big key uh, to really see where you are. Um, the network, the internal network scans, knowing whether or not you have holes within your network. You need a really good penetration test. And a penetration test is really um, a, a test from, uh, let's say, from us that we're going to look to hack into your system. We want to act like the bad guys, but not the bad guys. And then we want to tell you where those holes are so you can fix them. You can patch them up. You can close those holes. Um, you really need to have a good um, uh, BCP and IRP. And that's important. That's very, very important because if something does happen, uh, you need to know how to react to that. So there are elements that uh, you need to go through that will give you a better posture, a better cyber safe posture uh, going forward. So um, you just need to become aware of the compliance as well. That's a big key because many states have different compliance levels. So there's local uh, compliance, there are uh, federal compliance, state compliance, and all the states are adopting some way, shape, or form a compliance uh, mandate, so to speak. You know, giving you some guidelines of what you need to do when things happen, when the balloon goes up, as we call it. Because let's face it, um, if you have, there's three parts to a breach, right? So there's the pre-breach, which you do all the proactivity. This is where all the testing comes in. You want to continue to test your systems. You want to know where you stand. You want to make sure that everything's prepared. It's kind of like being, you know, in the scouts, whether it's the Girl Scouts or the Boy Scouts, and you're coming together and you practice and you practice and you practice. And I go back to the military and saying, that's all we did. We practiced, 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 right? And um, so you have things that you practice on the proactive side, understanding cybersecurity, then if there is a breach, then what do you do? You know, so you really need to know that because that's a whole different set of rules and regulations. And then the investigative part, the forensics part, you know, what, what happens then? So you have to really develop that. And that's, that's important. So that, that I say is a bunch of elements that uh, will give you a really good start. So, um, I think we probably have a few listeners right now who are thinking, oh, screw it. I'm just going to go back to paper tea sheets and cash registers and the hell with the computers. But going back to the, to, to the cloud-based systems, are the older client server systems more vulnerable than a cloud system? Well, again, again, the legacy systems are always need to be looked at. Um, you know, there are updates, there are different codes, there are you no know, different uh, ways that you utilize uh, devices. So you always have to continue to look at that. We test those all the time. Uh, every time we go through, uh, even in our monitoring uh, uh, systems, we do 24 uh, hour monitoring for anomalies. Uh, so we're always checking and um, things change every day. I mean, Harvey, every the landscape on cyber changes every single day. So mm -hmm. you always have to look at older systems and uh, how they really are going to be able to perform. They may be able to perform, but you want to make sure that they're able to be coupled with all of the cyber techniques and the quality of cybersecurity that, that, uh, that we practice today. So if a golf course experiences a cyber attack, um, what immediate measures should they be taking? Uh, well, first of all, got to go to your game plan. Uh, the game plan is the incident response plan. Now, I had mentioned it prior. 
-hmm. The big key is that an incident response plan is basically your booklet. It's your guide. So if you step into your office and you take a look at your screen and all of a sudden it's going crazy and all of a sudden you're required to pay um, money because now you're, you're it's a ransomware attack on you, um, then you need to know what it has to be done. So who do you report that to? Um, who do you get involved when you do have an, an attack? Uh, your legal counsel, uh, your broker, the insurance carrier, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's mapped out. So you really need to have that game plan. Uh, you know, we take a look at that for you. It's a lot of people don't even have them. Or on the other side, if they do have it, uh, they've shelved it. So, you know, practice, practice, practice. Sometimes I, uh, IRPs, incident response plans, have been shelved and they haven't taken them out in, you know, two years. So you really need to know that and continue to stay on, on top of that. Plus then at the end of the day, what agencies do you need to report to? Do you need to report to the um, Secret Service, the FBI, your local agencies? All that is mapped out. So that's part of uh, that's part of the process of being prepared if you have a breach. Um, I get the feeling, again, talking with um, people I know in the industry, that golf course operators think, "Hey, we're." We're small fry. I mean, we, we, we see the headlines when there's a major breach of, a, um, you know, out here it was city of Oakland recently, um, other major companies that have had breaches um, and golf course operators say, hey, I'm a you know million dollar, two million dollar business. I'm a small fry. They don't care about me. They're not going to bother with me. Um, is, is, is that a, legit, a legitimate excuse not to be prepared for a cyber attack? Uh, that's that's the biggest. That's a gr you got some great questions. Um, so here's the thing: the, the 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 hackers know exactly what you're thinking, and uh, and, and let me just hackers are not people who are down in the basement with hoods on. Okay, um, you know it used to be. You know they used to raise havoc on your systems. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, everybody said, oh, the kids in the basement, then they've got, you know, they can take control of, uh, you know, um, uh, the military um, warfare zone, you know, but that's not the case anymore. Um, you know, it's a $40 billion industry. Um, and, and, and I just want to give you an example of something too. So when you look at uh, code or ransomware or better yet, a phishing email attack goes out. And I'm sure that you are and everybody is getting a phishing email. Not once, not twice, not three, not four, five, ten times a day. Right. Because all you need is that hook. And it's exactly what it is. It's phishing, right? Um, and they want to get you. Um, so that's coming at you all the time. So if you're seeing it, you are a target. Um, and people or the hackers know or these agencies or these groups know that you, the small SMBs feel that, hey, they're not coming after me. Uh, you know, they're, they, I'm too small. I'm too small. But I got to tell you that you may be small, but if you have a breach, it's going to be very, very costly. They say six to eight months for small SMBs. If you're not protected correctly, you'll be out of business. And wow. you can tell, I mean, it's, it is devastating. Uh, the time, the effort, I mean, the, the amount of data that needs to be pulled, uh, if you even think you have a breach, because you're collecting data, you are a fiduciary. If you're in business, you are collecting that data. And now you have to take care of it. You have to nurture that data. I can't tell you enough. I mean, I get passionate. I get passionate. I want people to know because, look, we, we're losing this war out there. And we need to get more and more people involved, really get them to understand that you've got to take that rein and hold on to that data and protect it. Because all these hackers want it. They want your data. As little as it is, that it doesn't matter. Now, they could be utilizing your facility because you have an individual that goes to your facility, one individual that they want to target, they want to get some information so they can continue to create a spear phishing campaign 
for that to that individual because that individual is associated with an organization that's huge. So those are some of the mindsets, but anything that they can collect and then disseminate and analyze and make sense of, they want. And because the mindset, the DNA hasn't been set yet in the SMB market, the mindset says, okay, hey, the big guys are getting it. I'm not that well protected. I'm, I'm not even educated. Um, they're not coming after me. That is further from the truth. That's exactly who they want to go after. And, and they'll sort it out. And look, let's face it. This is not about people sitting there doing this. These are about programs, cyber programs that are sorting through data at light speed. And we're not even talking about artificial intelligence yet. Mm -hmm. That's another set of circumstances that we have to look at. So I always, I always like to put this in. And whenever I think about it, I want to get it to you before uh, I, I miss it because I can start going into these, uh, into these tangents. Um, everything that you learn, it's not just about your business. It's about your home environment as well. All those practices that you look at and say, I've got to be concerned about my business because I'm a business owner and it's a business solution. Uh, I've got to have security awareness. I have to be trained. I've got to know what to do with the data. Um, I have to really take care of uh, my systems. I have to bring them up to speed. When you go home, follow the same practices. Very, very important, especially now that people are in the remote platforms, their home. 30% of all the folks, even throughout the pandemic, 30% didn't return back to the office. They're back at home. So there's a lot that needs to be considered. And you you are the forward thinkers. You're, you're getting this information. You take it to a whole different level. And now at least you can start a platform. And we're here. I mean, we make it really simple. Whether you use us or not, it, it, what matters is that you know the information and you can act on it. And it's not something to be taken lightly. It's just continuing to, you don't want to catch up. You want to be at that curve. You want to be able to be in the know. So it's got to really take, be in your DNA. Did I answer your question? <laughs> <laughs> Several times, I think. Um, one that we're, we're running uh, a, a little long. Uh, I have one more question, and this has to do with with um, labor at, at, at the golf course. Uh, labor has become a big problem. And generally in the golf course business, there's a constant churn from season to season of uh, people that are hired to work in the golf shop, running the golf uh, point of sale or golf management system, uh, learning that, um, you know, they're usually younger um, probably have more computer experience than even the owner himself. Um, it sometimes scares me thinking that would you really want to hire somebody that is majoring in computer science at the local college uh, just because they might be more apt to find ways to make a little bit more than their minimum wage that they're earning in the golf shop. So um, uh, how, you know, what, what can a note, what should or can an, uh, an operator, a manager do in educating the staff, uh, as well as maybe members in helping to helping to prevent cyber attacks? Um, well, it's kind of like two different things that we're talking about. Number one is always looking at, you know, employees, you know, you're looking at making sure that the data is protected. So you have to have internal controls. So I just wanted to make sure that we address that. And those are the things, again, we address, but, you know, you, you have to have internal controls on your data. Who has access to that data? It's almost kind of like being compartmentalized. Um, um, I came out of the intelligence units. We were compartmentalized. You know, we didn't know everything. It was always on a need-to-know basis. So that's one aspect, first. Um, secondly, security awareness training for everyone is imperative. Um, you've got to know what you're, uh, what you're looking at. When you get an email, you need to be a detective. I did a, um, uh, presentation on the inconvenience of cybersecurity, you know, all the things that you must do today. But one of the things is that when you have training on how to handle data, what are you looking at? What do you click on? What shouldn't you click on? How do you identify threats within an email that you're getting? 
um, devices. How do you keep them up to speed? You know, updates, those types of things. Um, even taking a device off premise, whether it's a laptop, uh, a mobile device, um, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, any device that you may have that have data, you have to keep that uh, controlled. So you basically, if it's a work device, it should be a work device, not a personal device. So you really need to split that out. And everybody goes, oh, OK, there's like 50,000 devices going on. But there are ways to do that. And there are ways to handle data if it is off premise. If somebody's in a shop and they're working on, you know, a cash register or a POS system, they need to know how to handle that. They need to know what's exposed and what's not exposed. Even if you have two or three people in the shop, you know, people look over your shoulder. Uh, we, we give training and we have modules that talk about when you're sitting down at a um, uh, on a plane or a train and people overlooking on your shoulder and reading what's on your device. That, in essence, is a breach because if they're collecting that data, they can see that data. So the, it's the whole mindset. And um, there are many different ways to approach the education. Everyone should be educated. You really need to know where that data is. And everyone ha is only on a need to know basis. So I don't know if that answered your question either, but it does. No, that helps a lot. Um, any last words of advice? I mean, we're, we're, we're running towards the end here. The, 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 your, your passion just flows in, in your answers and, and presentation. Uh, I think that this is something that uh, I'll be discussing with um, uh, the folks at NGCOA about you know, possibly uh, including something in, in the, the tech con. By the way, folks, mark your calendar. October 10 and 11 is the next NGCOA tech con in Las Vegas. Um, but I think this is a, a critical uh, conversation to have there as well, because we'll have both owners and operators in the audience, as well as their point of sale companies, who will be rep many of which will be represented at the tech con as well. And I think that might present some good back and forth between, hey, this is what we're doing for you, or this is, or, or at least uh, owners and operators being able to question uh, directly uh, based on the conversations we have there. But any last words of advice? What's what, what's the last what, what what's the last big thing you want to leave with uh, our members who are who are watching this? Um, well, first of all, the it's it's about getting cybersecurity into your DNA. Learn about it, right? And um, that's that's important. Take it very very seriously. Uh, as I said, do it at home. Keep the practice going, and uh, I think that's the big key. You've got to be in it. Uh, in order to win it. And, um, and, and it's, it, this is everybody's responsibility. You can't back in the day, you say, okay, it's somebody else's job. It's no longer, it's everyone's responsibility. So, um, you know, and it's not, and it's not overwhelming. You, you can do it a little bit at a time and we'll show you how to do that. It's not that costly either. Uh, the bigger cost, if you had a breach, but just, Put it as part of your DNA. Think about it every day. Read things. Um, so I, I think you're on a good track. If you take this and kind of move the needle up a little forward, I think you're on a good, good, good platform. And and October, by the way, is Cybersecurity Month. So I just want to let you know. That's right. Yeah, you told me that October is Cybersecurity Month. Even better that we talk about this at TechCon. So, uh, Joe Saracino, President and CEO of Sino Security Solutions, uh, thank you very much. This is You're so uh, welcome. This has been both um, enlightening um, and a little scary. Um, but sometimes being scared is what motivates people to to take action. Um, and I'm sure we'll be talking again. So, thanks again. Uh, take welcome. care, and thanks everybody for watching. And uh, we we will have uh, we will give you the availability of how to how to reach Joe. Um, and uh, so, if you have questions directly or are looking for that help, uh, we want to make sure that that you're sent in the right direction. Take care, everybody. So long. Mm -hmm.